Hey, what's up everybody? This video is for Tony and Carolina. We're working on their burner today and the subject is emergency cutoff system. Now we have the thermal couples cutoff system. We've seen the videos of that working, but um, there is a particular failure mode that the thermal couple system is just not adequate to handle and that is an air compressor failure. Vice versa, any pressure sensor or anything you hook up to an air compressor, that failure mode is not compatible with the simple flame out mode. You still have fuel dumping out all over. So we had to put two different systems combined into one format here to pull this off. As you can see, I just pulled the air hose and the pump shut off. Okay, so let's try that again. Let's do one megawatt. Everything is shut off. You're gonna have that little bit of residual flame there. Now, if we didn't have those drain ports on the bottom, it'd be a lot worse. You see, did you see how a big puddle of it kind of fell out the bottom there? I'll try and find a clip of that, but uh, that's all I can do for today, guys. I am so far behind, it ain't even funny. I gotta feed this thing before it dies on me. So I'm gonna eat and uh, try and edit this video for you. Tony and uh, Carolina, I'm going to have you in a box by the end of the night, and you will be shipped out first thing Monday morning. And um, Mike in Australia, brother, you're in that same shipment if you're watching this, brother. I didn't forget about you, man. Let me rephrase that. Mike the Brickin' Blacksmith from Australia. And for the record, fellas, Matt B. brought this idea up about using the air pressure itself as a means to sense the change and process. So, right on, brother. We put your idea to good use. Okay, so right here we're looking at the process value temperature, the red letters and the green letters below that are the thermal couple temp. So we press the set button and that allows us to adjust the set value. So what we want to do is after the system is normalized, we would set the temperature five degrees below what the process value is. So that way if something changes and the temperature drops, the system will be shut off and we don't have to worry about thousands of gallons of fuel spraying out if there's a flame out or something. So that's just a quick way of, of doing that. You also have to remember to turn the, the um, bypass switch off, which is the switch on the control board. You have to turn it back to the off setting once um, you're ready to roll. But yeah, basically that's how you change this thing. It's real simple. If you forget to flip this switch, once you've got everything set, the system won't shut down unless the air compressor dies. So having that switch flipped is pretty important. You can see here the temperature is dropping. It's about ready to shut off right now. But uh, that's one thing you got to remember. Just set the temperature just below your actual functioning temperature and you'll be all right. I'm going to go ahead and trigger the system for you and show you how it works. I set it at 348 degrees here, we're at 354. I'm now gonna change the flame up a little bit to induce an alteration. And the thermal couple is gonna pick up on that. And we're going to be able to induce a system shutdown just as if the wind blew the flame out or if an air bubble got inside the fuel line, which does happen. You can see there the temperature is now dropping rapidly. And any second it'll shut down. There it goes. See how the pump's been shut off because the temperature dropped? Now we didn't have an actual flame out. I just wanted to mimic a flame out scenario there. Alright guys, so here's the system without the pressure sensor. 
and there are some situations where it's just highly inadequate for that particular failure mode especially if the wind is blowing in a way that's just not conducive to this process you can see here the system has now lost air however the pump is still on pumping huge amounts of fluid into the combustion chamber we don't have the drain in place on this particular test but uh, there is now a drain in the bottom of the burner so that the fluid doesn't just pile up like this and as you can see um, quite the situation arises here this uh, gets pretty nasty I end up blowing it out there with some air just to kind of qualm it down but uh, as you can see that's how it was without the flow sensor the winds blowing directly back at us typically you would have a draft pulling forward but in this case we didn't have that so it just takes the thermal couple a little bit too long to shut down but then again like I said if you just had a flow sensor then you would not be able to handle other failure modes like a flame out or an air bubble stuff like that so just wanted to show you guys this so we can see what's going on these air bubbles can cause a flame out so we got to get them out of there let's crank it up Now, another modification that we've made to the combustion chamber is there are some drainage ports on the bottom of this thing now. I don't know if you can see those in this lighting. We'll get a better look at that here in a minute. But uh, there are two drainage ports in the bottom of this thing so that the trajectory of our fuel falls right out the bottom of that drain port. You can kind of see it right there. There's two of those aligned perfectly with the trajectory of the fuel stream. So in the event of an air compressor failure, as the fuel's just dumping out, it's not pooling up inside of here because what happens is, is it keeps the fire going long enough to slow down the temperature drop, which is why the thermocouple system is not adequate for a compressor failure mode. It is adequate for a flame out scenario where the flame blows out, but everything else keeps going. Um, a compressor, uh, an airflow um, low pressure sensor would not mitigate that issue. So we need both. <sighs> so I have a modified pressure switch here that is um, set to shut off at around 20 PSI's. And unfortunately, it can also shut off if the pressure goes too high. But because I have it set up in a Ventura configuration, we're okay. You do got to be careful to set the air pressure um, to work under the parameters of this particular unit. I think I'm at 120 PSI's right now on the air pressure. And if you have any problems, adjustments are easily made by repositioning this spring screw inside of here. You can see how I have it pushed down all the way. And I also had to put a different spring in here. It, it came with a much weaker spring than that. You can see here the contacts are open in a zero pressure mode and that shuts down everything now in the event the air compressor doesn't die but we just have a flame out that is where the thermal couple system comes into play so we have uh, pretty much tackled the situation with uh, a much safer setup the last experiment we seen was just a little bit scary to look at we had a huge fire going it did shut off, but that just wasn't acceptable. I, I, I had to set you guys up with something a lot better than that, Tony. So, so there we go. Tony, Carolina, I want to thank you guys for your patience. I just couldn't bring myself to send the, the unit out after that first test. That was just not adequate. Yes, it worked, but it was a train wreck. So I had to do a little something extra for you. I really appreciate you guys' business. I've added that extra component on there at no cost to you because 
I wanted the thing to shut off instantly in the midst of an air compressor failure because that was one of the most dangerous scenarios as we've seen in my last test. Quite the fireball.